Hello, Serge here for the Backyard Driving Range. All right, today we have three questions I have to read because they're all related to the same thing. And I'm going to start off with the first one that came in. And because it's probably, uh, without a doubt, the one that's more popular in, and more in, uh, in news today in, in the last couple of weeks. And this comes to us from George. And George states, if I'm not mistaken, in B Park has a vertical swing very much like yours, and her accuracy and distance with a slow, smooth swing is remarkably effective. Correct the mundo, all right? So, going to go to the second letter. This one again is, I believe, completely about in B Park. And this one comes to us from John Gentry. And John says, Dear Serge, I watched the women's open this afternoon. I noticed that NB Park has a very short vertical backswing. The follow through is not so vertical. Correct, good observation. She gets a little bit wide, but she does get over there pretty good and she finishes quite, quite close to, to uh, square to the target. So she's, she's pretty close. Her follow through isn't as good as, as her backswing. And, uh, but yet, as I always say, if you could only have one half of the swing correct, what would be the better half, the backswing or the forward swing? And a lot of people always, because I'm so big on the backswing, they always say that. But in reality, I'd rather have the forward swing because that's the side you hit the ball with. But her backswing is so good and she's not that bad off on the other side that, that she's really, uh, she still remains quite, gets quite tight parameters and really hits a lot of fairways and greens as is evident as, uh, and as winning tournaments like, like it's going out of style. So again, as you said, the follow through is not so vertical. I noticed that Annika and other com commentators said she would hit the ball farther with a longer backswing. I noticed she is leading the tournament by four strokes. Your thoughts, okay? Again, that's the, pers that's the misconception. A lot of people really believe that, that rotational swing hits the ball farther, but it doesn't. The peak performance swing does hit it farther and because and, uh, you hit it more solid and more straight, and that always comes out to, to longer. And I also have a biomechanical study uh, that I did, I was involved in in 95, 96. It was called the effect of a shortening of the full golf backswing on club head velocity of ball impact. We took overswingers with a 7 iron and shortened them up, and they did not lose club head speed as everybody believes you do with a vertical, with a short swing, but they actually increased speed. And, and uh, they also, we also showed in that study that they, that from where they, when they had the long swing, they were more vertical when they shortened up. And, and that, that, and the study eventually pre, uh, documented that that the uh, swing was faster because when you got deep and long you had, to, you had to pull the club back around and back up which means it was going that way and when you had to stop it going that way to make it go to the ball there down there you had to grab it which tightened your arms up and slowed down as you went to try to find and get the club back to square and online as compared to just up and down was faster and freer less movement less margin of error and hit the ball more solid and straight okay and the study also mentioned that that uh, that big rotational swing was quite stressful on the body as compared to the peak performance. So with that one, then we have the last one. The last one goes again into, uh, into this and adds a couple new players to the, to the, to the question and uh, I think another good thought. My qu this question comes to us from Pat Burling and Pat says, my question for Serge. Looks to me like Kenny Perrinley, currently on the PGA Senior Tour, uses PPG swing or something very close. Can you confirm this? Thank you, Pat Burling, or J. Pat Burling. All right. Yes, Kenny is, is very, very vertical. And if you've been watching anything in the, in the Champions Tour lately, uh, I think you can see that. Although Kenny does make, does get two parallel a little bit more, and he does swing up and has a little bit different, different finish. And he is somewhat vertical in the finish because I think I've read somewhere or heard that he has some type of shoulder t problem. And that's why he actually has to get up here and, and he makes this funny little move at the top of the backswing. Naturally, if, if I had Kenny for a, a, t uh, a student, the first thing I'd find out is, is I'd work a little bit more on his range of motion here. And I would try to, to make sure that he doesn't uh, to see could he go here and not need that. Because if he could still go here and keep the club there, and this could looks like to me, gets him a little bit deeper inside, which means he's going to have to come back out of the sacred barrel around a little bit. If we avoid that, we can get him hitting the ball even more solid and more deadly straight. All right. So another guy I would talk about that you really want to watch, who is probably as good a peak performance swinger as you can see, is Jeff Sluman. Jeff Sluman. 
Jeff's one of the, at the time was back in the 90s when I was a golf magazine teaching editor, they did an article one time and they called it yards per pound. They took a player's weight and divided it by his average distance and, and, and they came up with the average. And everybody thought that at that time John Daly and probably some of the other big hitters like uh, Davis Love out there at the time uh, would definitely be the winner and, and the yards per pound and yet it was Jeff Sluman, okay? <laughs> because and you look at Jeff Sluman, if you haven't noticed it, and I'm surprised nobody's brought that up yet because Jeff has it on both sides of the ball. I mean, he is right there. And he's been that way his whole life. Straight up, straight down, and right up over his shoulders. Really, really good player. But since uh, two or three questions have been about NB, let's talk about MB, and then we'll get back to those other ones. Right here is the uh, Golf Week. As you know, that's my favorite magazine because uh, I get it every week. It's the only one I get. And this has NB Park on the front cover with her hands up in the air like this. And notice that they're up in the air like this, right? Because the hands can only raise and they can only move in front of the body. And the, the, the golf week the, is July 5th, 2013. And the basic cover is, is uh, about NB Park winning the, open, uh, the Women's Open. All right? It's got this picture right here. Perfectly at the top of her backswing, right in here at the top. She has a beautiful triangulation of her arms, and the club is the club is just about, I don't know if she's dead at the top or maybe starting down, but she's probably at about no more than five minutes short of having the club dead 12 o'clock. It's maybe just about right, right about there. All right, so that could be they got her just before she was up or just, just about after she was starting down. But she is very vertical, and the thing I like to see is if you can find this picture, and I'm sure it's coming up on the screen right now, what I want you to look at is, is the fact that look at her elbows right here. Look at how her elbows, if you put a line on her elbows, they're almost dead level to the ground. And so if you, if you got the club vertical, and it's nothing wrong if the right elbow is maybe a degree or two higher than the left, and, and I actually believe the perfect swing will actually cross the line, a de, uh, you know, a degree or two or three off, we want to call it 12 o'clock and go to 12.0123, no more than no 05. All right, cross the line because for every action, there's a reaction. I just had a, a bug flying on the top of the club there. And so when I come back and then when I finish on this side and we swing through, the triangle should be there again and it should be just about dead level levels, equilateral triangle, because the both arms, if they're relatively the same length, will be an equilateral triangle, and we want the base, elbow to elbow, to be just about dead level to the ground, or on this side, since the backswing had the right one maybe a couple degrees up because we crossed the line a little bit, then because we come in from here and the club hands comes close and the club comes across the, hand, the, uh, the shoulders diagonally, and before I recall and relax, this elbow at that point could be just a degree or two up higher on that side as it was the right elbow up on the other side. All right, so the lead elbow. So you're, we're going to call it lead because it's closest to the camera right here. And then on the right for me in the backswing and the left in the forward swing. Now they're both pretty close, but the outside elbow, okay? So that's the, that's the essence of, of having the, the triangles. Now remember, in the old days, this was definitely a flying right elbow because they always wanted you to keep your elbow close. But what's the, why, why can't you keep your elbow, your right arm close or your left arm if it's your left-hander? Why can't you keep it close to your body? Well, if you keep it close to your body, the radius of your swing is now being defined by that arm, the one that's, the one that's bent, and it's gonna cause what? You can't keep the left arm straight. The left arm in the backswing for righty and the right, and, and the right arm for lefty is, is your lead arm. That's, that's the one that's the string that's creating the string. So if I, if I had a towel or something underneath my arm here, or I get a golf glove over here, like a lot of people do, they practice with a glove under their arm. Well, if I, if I keep my right elbow tucked like this, it stays here. But if I, if I put this club out there and do that, the glove falls. And so I, I, it just blows my mind that over all the years that, that drill was taught and that exercise was taught and how many guys on a PGA Tour are doing it today. And some of these guys have it under both arms and they keep it there all the way. And that's why, that's why and when you got that, you got... You never, you're never getting maximum extension. You're never getting a maximum stretch on your arms. So the stretch of your muscles. So they maximum stretch, they're going to have maximum release. They're in here bent. You never get maximum stretch or release, which means you're not getting maximum power. And if you can't get it out of your arms because you're trying to box with your arms tied up, right? I mean, hey, I could probably even have a chance of winning a fight against uh, a heavyweight champion if I, could, if I could tie his arms up and all he can do is this and I could still stand back and bop him like that but I still think I'd probably need to have, have lead weights in my, in my glove so when I hit him there's, there's a lot more power there but he probably could never really truly hit me but what he'd probably have to start doing is try to 
lunge on me and grab me with one arm so he can pummel, pummel me with the other one because he's all tight. So we have to get that lift and it's pure lift with both arms on each side. So this, this concept of, of staying tucked and everything else. Now years ago, a tucked arm was always, was always like this. Now today, and this was always a flying right elbow. Today, this is still a flying right elbow unless it's like this. Because they talk about putting the elbow, the right arm down and the elbow to the ground. Well, if I do that, look what happens to the club. There it is. And, and when you do this, and you do this at all, what do you do? As soon as I do this, especially with my left hand on the club, I can feel a pull come right up here from the back of my, the back of my head, right down the back of my ear, all the way down my neck, right here and down my arm. And it can also start going down here once I'm in dynamic motion and doing this. It's stressful. As soon as you start creating tension, stress, and strain, Dr. Armstrong said that's the prelude to pain. It's to tell you, something is not correct. So you just want your arms to go back to that natural triangle here, and from there, it goes to the natural, the natural triangle there. And NB Park has it. Kenny Perry had just, has a pretty good shot at it. Better in the backswing. And overall, he is quite vertical. Jeff Sluman is really good if you want to watch somebody good. The good news is I think I'm starting to see a few more players go more vertical. I think a few years back after Patrick Harrington won, won his three majors, next thing you know, where is he? He's over here flat to flat. Goodbye, Patrick, for two or three years. All right, now he's coming back. You look at him again. He's really close to where he was before, up and down like that. I've seen it with, I see, you still see, I, I've seen it with, and you can see it now if you watch Stuart Appleby. He, he got flat on both sides, and he was always beautiful up and down. And, and he's getting more vertical. Look, he had a big win. He shot 59 about a year or two ago, and he's, he's, he's slowly coming back. But I've seen a lot of good players who won tournaments, and in that quest and that zeal to, to keep getting better and better, they went the wrong way. They jumped from the middle of the street and they jumped to the wrong curb. Because as you know, I say if, if everybody, most of everybody's on that, on that side of the street, on that curb, on that sidewalk, I'm on that one. We're on that one if you're a peak performance swinger. We're on that one. We want to be, and in the end, if there's such a thing as we want to walk the center line. And, and so at the worst, we're on the center line, everybody's over there. And when these guys who were with us jumped over there, that's when the game went south. And now they're coming back. The more they come back to, to per, uh, re, uh, vertical, the better they're starting to get again. They're starting to make some good comebacks, as I just, as I just uh, stated with, with uh, Stuart Appleby and Padraig Harrington. I think you're going, to see the, you're going to see them in contention a lot more and, 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 and really hitting much better shots and, and, and start winning again as they each already uh, I don't think Padraig's won yet, but, but Stuart won about a year ago. And so vertical's it. Because your arms are designed to go only one way, up and down in front of your body. And vertical is light. Light, you can swing more controlled and faster. Because that's the way our arms are designed to swing. All right? So, NB is vertical. Kenny Perry was at a question asked. And I threw in Jeff Sluman as another great example. And let us not forget the greatest of all, Jack Nicholas. You can go check that out on the website. John Bartholomew, uh, my swing surgeon, uh, head instructor in, in Charlotte, did a Evolution of Jack Nicholas' Swing video that's on YouTube somewhere. You can go find it. And he also did one of Jack Nicholas versus the Peak Performance Golf Swing using Jack and me side by side. And Jack is, is nice and vertical. Okay, so you can look those up if you want to see something else that's good. And, and hopefully maybe they can get the, on, on the, on the write-up on this, they can get that they can get uh, that link in there for Jack Nicholas's swings because I know we've set up if I've set it before and they've put it up there so hopefully it'll be below here and you can just find that link and go go to it all right so vertical is good light is right light club is right vertical is great and that's it for the search for today and I'll be talking with you all again soon